This is a free cut gear tutorial. Hey guys, Shock here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use FreeCAD to design this uh, set of gears. I'm going to talk about module and talk about the distance between the axis and backlash so they spin freely. Module. Module is a unit of size for gears. This is module 2, this is module 4. All those clocks back here are module 2. And here I show a module 1 and 10 teeth. So module times the number of teeth gives you the pitch circle. Here 10 millimeters. Then the height of the, the tooth is 2.25. So gives an outer diameter of 12 millimeter and a root diameter of 7.5 millimeter. Distance. So in this example, module 4, gear 1 is 12 teeth, gear 2 is 24 teeth. That gives a distance of 72 millimeters. Here's the formula you can use to calculate this. The module can also be custom to fit a certain distance. Using this formula, if I want a distance of 50 millimeters, with those same gears, 12 and 24, the formula will give us a module of 2.78. Let's do it. A quick look on how to install the FC gear workbench add-on using the add-on feature. So choose it, restart, FreeCAD. There we go. I like to do a body for each different part. So here I'm doing a body for the frame. Put the circle, second circle. Make sure they are latched on the line. And then put some dimension, 5 and 10. And then I'm going to use the equal feature to get them all the same size. OK. Then I'm going to put two lines. I also latch the line to the outer circle. Then trim the circle. Then I'm going to put the distance for both lines with the center line. So I pick one end of the line, put a vertical dimension of two. Same for the other line. And then with the formula that we saw be before, I'm going to put the, di the distance between the two holes, which is going to be 72. OK, close, pad, 10 millimeters, leave it like this. There's my frame. Now the gears. Go in the body gear 12, go to the gear workbench, Select the gear, go to data, can change 12, module 4. Then I'm going to move the gear where I want it. You can use the transform, but I can also use data, moving the body, putting the distance I want, the direction I want. Okay, now I go to the other body to do the other gear. Select the gear. Select the gear. Go to data. 24 and module 4. Then to the body to move it where I want it. That's going to be 72. and 11 to be the same. OK, here we have both gears. I'm going to do one more thing, is just turn that gear so the teeth 
meshes correctly, put the angle. Okay. I'm going to select the face in part design, the circle, select the dimension to 5, 5.2 for the bit of play. Okay, close pocket, I have a hole. I'm going to do another sketch. For the spokes, so start again, circle, another circle, going to dimension those circles, then two lines, I latch them to the circle again. Then trim. Put some dimensions to the lines, distance from the center, vertical here, an horizontal dimension here. Okay, close. Pocket. And I'm going to use the polar pattern feature. Select that last pocket, then bring the number up to 4K. There's my gear with spokes. Now I can finish the gear 12, so same for the hole as I just did. Then I can change the thickness. Can go back to the data. Okay, now I can start. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use that spline tool. And then put some dimension. Dimension one side. Then I'm going to use the symmetric feature to do the other side. Okay, do a pocket, change the depth, and then the polar pattern, free, and there we go. We have both gears. Backlash. This is the formula I use. Basically, the value I want divided by the number of teeth. The backlash makes a rotation, so the profile is still optimal. So go back to the gear, all the way down, have the backlash. So 1 divided by 12, and then I'm going to do a time 1 third. 1 third for the small gear. Then I'm going to do the other gear. So select the 12, the 24, select 24, put 1 divided by 24 times 2 third because it's the bigger gear. And here we are. And I can remove the gear so the same plane. Then I'm going to measure how much the distance I have, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 almost, so one millimeter backlash. To export as STL, I'm going to select the body, export, choose STL, give it a name, click save or click enter. Click the other body, name to enter. Now I'm going to open. I want to show you one setting in the slicer. I use Cura. In 
the shell I go to that initial layer horizontal expansion and that's to prevent the elephant foot problem and I found 0 0.25 seems to be working quite well you can see it's smaller but when it's printed it's going to be it's going to be good if you go lower than 12 teeth like 10 teeth you might get some interference there's a feature called undercut that can help the rendering in FreeCAD can be quite rough so I wanted to compare two STL files one from FreeCAD and one from Fusion 360 and see how they compare and I think it's pretty close good enough for 3D printing so I hope you learn a few useful things with my Git tutorial please like subscribe see you next time thank you for watching bye